Hello, all glory to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, moving through the the end time stuff, it's going a, a little bit of a divergence. There's something that I think people commonly get wrong. That's the Ezekiel 38 war, which I think happens after the millennium. So I want to go through that and just outline that. I have been through this before, but uh, sort of had new <laughs> revelations. I've, I've gone through it again a bit and... I think, uh, I think I have a better understanding of the timeline of events, so let's just go through it. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a, in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So what we're doing is we're casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. So these these strongholds of the devil, these things which he is leveraging, these lies, these mistakes that he is leveraging against us to, to deceive us. We're, we're pulling these things down. We're destroying these strongholds of the devil and helping to understand the truth. I think by understanding the truth, we then can take better actions in our life because we know what the truth is and we know what God's will is and we can better serve him. So one thing to keep in mind is that God wants all to come to repentance. In Second Peter 3 we read that and the way he acts, he's doing things in a way that gives us the best chance of coming to repentance. He's giving us every opportunity. Remember when in Israel, you know, the Israel, Israelites disobeyed him many times and he punished them, but then he didn't destroy them completely. He wanted them ultimately to come to an understanding of the truth and a knowledge of the truth. And he was also using them as an example to us um, to show his character. And the, the, way, the way things are going to play out are going to be the way that the most number of people come to repentance, I think. So keep that in mind in your your explorations of end times prophecy and stuff. And that God God isn't... He's not out to punish us. He's out to forgive us. He wants to forgive us. He wants us to come to repentance. He, had, he loves us and he want, he's part of, we're part of his family. He's our father and he doesn't want to punish his children. But you know, he, there is judgment and there's a necessary judgment because we can't live, in alter, live into alter, in eternity. We can't live in eternity with evil people doing evil things. So he wants to bring about the final judgment and separate the sheep from the goats and the wheat from the tares and get rid of the bad people so that then the good people can live in peace. But yeah, he's going to give every, every opportunity. So the, the way he's going about things, not to punish the most people, but to bring the most people to repentance and bring the most people as possible into his family. So Revelation 13, let's start here. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the sight, on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to all them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. So that bit there, he maketh fire come down from heaven and the earth in the sight of men. That's something that the people who think that the Ezekiel 38 war happens in the, the beginning of the tribulation, to kick that off, and I'm looking for that. Remember that, and we'll get to it. I'm going to read a lot of Ezekiel in this video. But the, one of the ways that God, the way that God punishes Gog and Magog, who come against Israel, is He brings down fire from heaven and destroys them. And so, Revelation 20, I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for word of, for the word of God which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. But when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to, ga <clears throat> to gather them to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. Fire da came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and he should be tormented day and night forever and ever. So there we have the uh, 
in verse 9 there, you know, Gog and Magog, after Satan's released from the prison, Gog and Magog, he's deceiving Gog and Magog, the four nations, uh, the nations from the four corners of the earth, that compassed the camp of the saints, about the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So the beast, Revelation 13, verse 13, makes fire come down from heaven. God makes fire come down from heaven to devour the enemies of Israel. In after the millennium, after the thousand years. So I think there's probably going to be a deception there with Ezekiel 38. It seems to be commonly taught in the church that that's going to happen, and it, it makes sense to me that the devil would want to spread that particular lie so that um, probably the beast is going to make fire down, come down from heaven on top of armies that are attacking Israel, and that's one of the deceptions that's going to bring about people believing that the beast is Jesus. So the order of events here, you have you know, those who don't take the mark, they're part of this first resurrection. And then the saints are going to rule with Jesus for a thousand years. And then the rest of the dead, they're not resurrected until the thousand years is complete. So after the thousand years, there's the, the second resurrection, you might say. After the thousand years, Satan is released. And Satan deceives the nations, Gog and Magog, to bring them to battle. Then fire, uh, God brings fire down from heaven to devour them, and then the devil is cast into the lake of fire. So that's the series of events we have playing out in Revelation 20. So let's go through Ezekiel, because I think it's, it's quite clear when you go through it that what's happening in Ezekiel is basically that sequence of events. So I'm going to read a lot of Ezekiel here. Ezekiel 36. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the words of the Lord, word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, because they have made you desolate, and swallowed you up on every side, that you may be a possession unto the residue of the heathen, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and are in infinite infamy of the people. So he's talking about, I think, this is the this is the last days, like the days we're in, coming up to, making Jerusalem desolate, you know, taking into possession Jerusalem and Israel. So this is the, you know, the end of the tribulation, you might say. Daniel's 70th week, I think he's talking about this. Therefore, ye, mountain of Is ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Edomir. Edomir, Edomir being you know, Edomites, the Edom, which have appointed my land to their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. This is the heathen you know, trampling down the city for... 40 and 2 months, I think, the second half of Daniel's 70th week. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. You have borne the shame of the heathen. It's, you know, The Jews of Israel have become persecuted. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up mine hands. Surely the heathen that are round about you, they shall bear their shame. I lifted up my hand, and the hand of God, the right hand of God, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. So you might say God's lifting up his right hand, he's lifting up Jesus. Uh, but ye, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches, and shall yield your fruit to my people of Israel. For they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, all the house of Israel. And the cities shall be inhabited, and the wastes shall be builded. The wastes shall be builded. So I haven't got, gone into it here, but if you read end times prophecies and the Old Testament prophets, God's talking about, basically my impression of the end times is that Israel, Jerusalem and Israel are going to be completely wiped out. That's the impression I get, completely wiped off the face of the map. It's going to be all the all the idols and things are going to be destroyed. All the sinners are going to be purged out of Israel, and then when Jesus brings the remnant back into Israel, and He's going to rebuild, the wastes are going to be builded. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. I'll do better unto you at your beginnings. So with Jesus ruling, 
and the saints as well, I think, the, the, the body of Christ, I think, will also be ruling, going to rebuild, going to be even better than it was in the past. Yea, it will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. So I don't know if it's talking about Christians there, the... Um, Thou shalt be their inheritance. Thou shalt no longer henceforth breathe them of men. I don't know. that like the men, I will cause men to walk upon you. I don't know if that's just talking about Israel and the after the resurrection, which we'll get to, or if that's talking about Christians. I still haven't quite figured out all the, the spiritual stuff and what, what our role is as kings and priests. But it's possible that's referring to us there or might just be for, referring to the Old Testament saints who were raised at that time. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, The land devourest up men, and hast bereaved thy nations. Therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave the na thy nations any more, saith the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more. Neither shalt thou bear the approach of the people any more. Neither shalt thou cause thy nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. So basically respect given back to Israel. And keep in mind that Israel was scattered among all the earth and in the northern tribe of Israel, scattered throughout all the earth. And I think you could say that the nations, particularly I think the nations of Europe, um, are at least in some way probably the descendants of the tribes of Israel. Remember that you know, out of Abraham's loins, <laughs> it's going to come in many nations. He's the father of many nations. So I think you could say that part of the nations here neither breathe thy nations anymore I think you could say that the nations are possibly at least the nations of Europe you might say neither will I cause men to hear in the shame of the heathen anymore not cause the nations to fall anymore moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land they defiled it by their own way and by their own doings their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman I talked about how you know, God talks about Israel as the whore of Babylon you know God was married to Israel and they went whoring around with the other gods they defiled they defiled it defiled, defiled their own land by their own doings as the uncleanness of a removed woman. A removed woman because God divorced Israel. Wherefore I poured out my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land, and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I scattered them among the heathen. Scattered them, the northern tribe, and then later on the southern tribe of Judah. The kingdom of Judah, sorry. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their way, and according to their doings I judged them. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name. When they said to them, uh, These are the people of the Lord, they are gone forth out of his land. So they kept profaning God, they kept rejecting Jesus, you might say. And they kept up their pagan Satan worshipping practices when they were kicked out of the land. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes. I don't do it because you've been good, O house of Israel, but for my own, for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. So I'm going to redeem you, not because you've been good, but for my own name's sake. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. I'll bring you out of the, your own land. Remember in uh, Matthew 24, read it a bit later, you know, God's going to send his angels out to gather the remnant of Israel and bring them back into the land. Then I'll sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I'll give you a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So God's going to put his spirit in the remnant of Israel. Keep in mind that Israel are blinded in part until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So Israel, you know, God's going to give the Holy Spirit to the remnant of Israel after he brings them back again. They'll no longer be blinded and they'll have the spirit. And keep in mind, uh, the remnant of Israel, I think, probably are going to be the, the Torah observant Jews. Because you know, the, the Kabbalistic Jews... The Kabbalah being you know paganism, Satan worship. 
So I think those are the ones that are going to get purged out of Israel. And then, but the Torah observant Jews, you might say, they still abide by the word of God. They just happen to reject Jesus. I think those are probably going to be part of the remnant of Israel. But they're just blind at the moment to Jesus Christ. So you know, hopefully some of them wake up. But I think that's probably going to be the remnant of Israel, the ones who still obey the Torah, but just reject Jesus. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you should be my people, and I will be your God. And I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and the increase of the field, that you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then you shall remember your own evil ways, and your doings that were not good, and shall loathe yourselves, yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Be ashamed because you've done the wrong thing, and you, I'm redeeming you, not because you've been righteous, but because of my own name. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I, sh I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded. So after Israel is destroyed, they'll be rebuilt when the remnant comes in. And the desolate land should be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places, and plant that that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel, to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flock. As the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feasts, shows, so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So they're eventually going to call out, you know, blessed is, when they call out, blessed is he. You, you won't see me again till I say, blessed, blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. And in the tribulation, at the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to realize that they've made a mistake and that they've rejected their Messiah. And they're going to call on Jesus, and then you know, Jacob is going to be saved out of his trouble. So Ezekiel 37, we get to the, the resurrection here. The hand of, hand of the Lord was upon me, and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. So he's causing the, this is a resurrection described here. In verse 11, And he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried, and our hope is lost, and we are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord, saith the Lord. So the resurrection here. So once God gathers the, the remnant of Israel, he's also going to resurrect, I guess, the past saints, and they're going to live in Israel. That's, that's why I'm reading this. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take one stick and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel and his companions, and join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what these meanest by these? Say unto them, saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and I will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before thy eye, before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and I will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. So the kingdom will no longer be divided, there will no longer be a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The tribe of Judah, so the people living in Israel, living in Israel at the moment, I would say, are probably more so the tribe of Judah, or the kingdom of Judah, but then the, 
the northern kingdom, which was scattered, the tribe of Israel, which has perhaps become, you might even say America is part of <laughs> part of that. And God talks elsewhere about you know, Ephraim should no longer vex Judah and Judah no longer vex Ephraim. I can't remember the exact words, but something like that. So there's kind of some infighting going on at the moment still. So that's going to end. Israel will be one nation again. And there's that bit from Matthew 24 here. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a great, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather his together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So he's going to gather all of Israel together into the land and resurrect those ones who have died. And I'll make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And there should be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them, so they... So shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. So that's Jesus. And they shall have one shepherd. So they shall walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. So Jesus, the prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. So there is going to be, you know, Ezekiel's temple is described in sort of the latter chapters of Ezekiel, and I, th I think that's the the temple that Jesus is going to establish once he, with Zerubbabel, you might say, is going to help, help build. Um, that's described in Zechariah, Zerubbabel building the temple. But So Israel is going to be wiped out, like the land of Israel wiped out, all the idols wiped out and made a plain. And then the mountain of the Lord is going to be reestablished. Uh, I think it's going to be a new mountain built. Uh, created and then Ezekiel's temple which is described in the latter chapters of Ezekiel will be there and Jesus will rule from there and I don't know what role we will have but Israel both the Israel the remnant of Israel from the time of Jacob's trouble and I assume the the resurrected past saints of Israel will be living in Israel for that thousand year period and then of course you know when it says the 27 there, my tabernacle shall be with them, yea, I will be their God and they shall be my people. So I think that's describing the new heaven and the new earth, and we'll get to that a bit later. But of course, and we know that in Revelation 21, there's the new heaven and the new earth, and there's the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven, and that's when God lives with us. So God isn't coming down during the thousand years, that's Jesus, like the Father, I should say. The Father isn't coming down for the thousand years, that's still Jesus. Jesus needs to reign until... All of the enemies are defeated, and we'll get to that. So Ezekiel 38. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, chief prince of, of, Mesh <coughs> chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them holding, handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, and all of them with shield and helmet, Goma and all his bands, the house of Togama, of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that is assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days... Uh, thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, and is gathered out of many people, against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. So this is after the thousand years, I think this is describing. Verse 14, Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it? Don't you know that we're dwelling safely? This is after a thousand years. Remembering that Satan is going to be released after that thousand years and deceive the nations of the world and bring them against Israel. 
And I shall come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, and I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken? That in old time, by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I will bring thee against them. And 22, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon many people that are with him, an overflowing rain of great hailstones, fire and brimstone. It's the fire coming down from heaven to destroy Gog and Magog. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself. I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So I'm going to, I'll talk more about it as we go forward and explain. So some people saying this is happening in the beginning of the tribulation, beginning of Jacob's trouble. And yeah, I don't think so. We'll get to it. So, But remember, Israel is going to be ruling the world for this period of time. You know, Jesus Christ and the saints ruling for the thousand years. Then after that thousand years, Satan gets released. So, Zechariah 14. It shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the lord of the hosts, to keep the feast of tabernacles. This is during the thousand years. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth under Jerusalem to worship the king, the lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, and come not, that have no rain, there should be have the rain. There should be the plague where the Lord shall smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This should be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So remember, we're going to be ruling with a rod of iron, or Jesus is going to be ruling with a rod of iron. If you don't come and pay fealty to Jerusalem, Israel, you don't come up and keep the feast of tabernacles, your nation will be punished. So there might be a bit of resentment perhaps after the thousand years, after Satan comes out and starts deceiving people, saying, hey, this, why, why are Israel ruling you? So the nation's deceived by Satan, who's tempting them to sin again, and they resent Israel perhaps. And they come against Israel, thinking that they can do the same thing to Israel that they've done in the past. You know, people In the past, Israel, the nations have come against Israel and they've spoiled Israel. But this time, God is going to show that the only reason why Israel were defeated in the past is because God was hiding his face from them. So remember in the tribulation, I think Israel are going to get wiped off the map, the remnant saved. This time, God's going to protect them. And so he's proving that Israel are his people and they have authority and divine protection. So Ezekiel 39. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they have trespassed against me. Therefore I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies, so they fell by the sword. According to the un their uncleanness, and according to their transgressions have I done unto them, and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Now I will bring again the captivity of Jacob, and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. They that have borne their shame, all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwelt safely in their land, and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people, and gathered them out of their enemies' lands, and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God, which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen, but I have gathered them into their own land, and have left none of them there any more, none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, for I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. So there's God proving to Israel, proving to the world, but also proving to Israel that he's not going to forsake them anymore. The entire world comes against Israel, and I guess it would probably probably be looking fairly dire for them at that point. But then God's showing Israel, no, it's okay, I'm with you now, and remember Jesus is going to be with them. He's going to protect Israel, so they don't have to fear anymore. So, yeah, the dead who are not raised in the first resurrection, they'll be raised after the thousand years, the way I'm reading it. The first thousand years... Yeah, the second, the first resurrection, and the rest, the rest of the dead live not again till a thousand years is past, is expired. So, so living on the earth after a thousand years is going to be three groups of people. There'll be those who partook in the first resurrection, who will not see death, and the power of death have no, death has no power over them anymore. So that will include Christians, and I think it will also include Old Testament saints. Then there'll be the descendants of those who uh, survived the wrath of God, 
both the remnant of Israel and the um, the heathen, the the, the non-Israel people who survived the wrath of God. Because I think there still will be nations. There still will be, will be a remnant of the nations during that time. So their descendants will be alive at the end of the thousand years. And then there'll be those who are part of the second resurrection. So I think these are people who they screwed up the first time, they went against God the first time, they rejected God the first time, but now they have a chance to repent and do the right thing this time. And they've got another chance to follow God. God is being merciful and he's resurrecting them and saying, all right, you've got another shot. So they can follow God or they can follow Satan. Satan's going to be released again. They've got another chance. They've got another choice to make. And those who rebel against Israel this second time, uh, this is the second death. So the second death, you know, if you <laughs> if you gather with Satan against Israel a second time after the thousand years, that's that's the end. So this thousand years that we've got coming up, this is a thousand years of rest. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. That's Jesus, which will stand for, the, for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So Israel will be there ruling, Jesus ruling from Jerusalem. To it shall the Gentiles seek the Feast of Tabernacles. You've got to go up and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And his rest shall be glorious, a thousand years of peace. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So if you think about the, the years, of, you know, the, how long has it been, how long has creation been? And is it, you know, approximately 6,000 years at this point between initial creation and now. So the, the next thousand years that's coming, that's the Sabbath. It's a Sabbath day. <laughs> day with the Lord is, is a thousand years. A thousand years is a day. So that the next day that's coming is the Sabbath day. It's the rest day. So we've got that coming up. Then, after the Sabbath, cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For when... For he, for he hath put all things under his feet. But when he saith, All things are put unto him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So Satan's the last person to be thrown into the lake of fire, basically. We've got the, you know, the, the books are. Or I'll read it here. Revelation 20. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and, the death, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And did I read it earlier? Where have I got to go? I must hold on one second. Yeah, so it's in Revelation 20. I read it earlier. So the you know, I talked about the Gog and Magog war. You know, a thousand years have expired, verse 7, Revelation 20, verse 7. Deceiving the nations, Gog and Magog gathered into battle. They went up the breadth of the earth, campused round Jerusalem, or the camp of the saints in Jerusalem. Fire came down from God out of heaven, devoured them. And then the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. So and then we go back down to what I was reading just then, Revelation 20. It says, The great white, great white throne, him that sat on it, so there's the new heaven and new earth, basically, and then there's the, the judgment that happens, and then death and hell, one of the last things that happens, death and hell cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So all things must be put under his feet, and Jesus ruling until all things that the last enemy to destroy it is the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So basically everybody who rejects God, rejects Jesus Christ, um, Gonna have a a second a second chance, you might say. This is the way I'm reading it here. Is there's a second chance there'll be a resurrection, and you know Satan's gonna deceive everybody again. Not 100% certain about that, 
Like there may be a resurrection, may not be a resurrection. It may just be that Satan gets deceived and all the people who are living out on the earth at that time get a chance to accept or reject God. But it, it sort of so it sounds to me like there's going to be a second resurrection based on that. You know, the, the dead should not live again until a thousand years are expired. And then there's a second death. Take a fire, second death. And yeah, the last thing to be destroyed is death. So after everybody's made their choice, you're either, alive, you're either alive or dead, you've chosen eternal life for eternal death. After that's happened, there's no more death. Then after that, we have the new heaven and new earth. After everybody's made their choice, all the good people are with God, all the bad people are with Satan. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and will be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So that's the end point. That's the final end point. After everybody's judged, it's going to be the new heaven and new earth. And that's when God himself, the Father himself, will come down and live with us. So who are Gog and Magog? I'm not 100% certain about this because it's, it's a bit... There's not that much information about them in the Bible. But if we go to... Yeah, so Ezekiel 38. The son of man set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal and prophesy against him. So we get Genesis 10, the sons of Japheth, Goma, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshech, and Tiraz, so sons of Japheth. The sons of Goma, Ashkenaz, and Riptar, and Togama, the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, and Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles, the isles of the Gentiles, divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. So I, I have a theory that Gog and Magog are uh, pretty much the sons of Japheth. Um, and it's got something to do with the Isles as well. So there's people who live in the Isles. So we've got Ezekiel 38 there. Sheba and Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, and carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? And some... Uh, 72, which is about Jesus. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. So Tarshish and the isles. And Ezekiel 27. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kind of riches. With silver, iron, tin and lead, they traded in thy fairs. Javan, Tubal and Meshech. They were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. They, the house of Togama, traded in thy fairs with horses and horsemen and mules. The men of Dedan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They brought thee for a present horns of ivory and ebony. Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the wares of thy making. They occupied in thy fairs with emeralds, purple, and broidered work, and fine linen, and coral, and agate. So these, these merchants live in the isles. Isaiah 42, Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. That Jesus. He shall not cry nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break. And smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged. He have settled, set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. The isles shall wait for his law. So we've got this. Gog and Magog seems to be associated with the sons of Japheth, and they seem to be associated with the isles and with trading. 
And I've got here in Zai 42, till he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. So if you think about the the um, so the, the history of the Bible and it was like, who, who are the peoples of the earth? So it seems to me that Shem is white people, and Ham is black people, and Japheth, Japheth is Asian people. That seems to be what it is. It seems to be the, the three sons of Noah. And Shem and Ham have already played a fairly significant role. I mean, Shem, obviously, the you know, it's, it's, it's Israel, and I'd say that's the, the West, and it's also the Arab peoples, are just, are descended from Abraham, just who's descended from Shem. And I've got black people, who is like you know, the Babylonians and the Egyptians, and you might say that's Africa. So they've played a role. You've got the, you know, Babylon and Israel, basically, have played a role already quite significantly in the history of the world, but in history of biblical prophecy, whereas Japheth and the sons of Japheth, they haven't really played that much of a role in the Bible, I don't think. And when you think about Asian people, they, you know, Asian people live sort of in the isles, you might say. I mean, it's, it's not exactly the case, but if you think about like Indonesia and the Philippines and Japan even, and you know, the Maoris, the, the Polynesians, the Micronesians, the Fijians, the you know, Malaysians, the Vietnamese, and sort of the people who are sort of the Far East, you might say, sort of in the, in the Isles, they haven't played a significant role in Bible prophecy yet. So I think you could say that you know, these Isles who are waiting for the law, obviously, you know, in recent times, the, the word of the Lord has spread all over the world. But the sons of Japheth, I don't think, have played a very significant role in biblical prophecy yet. And they are, they have been seen as traitors. Trade with a D, not traitors, traders. If you think of China, I mean, China had a large role in trade uh, and still does have a large role in trade. Not not a massive role as far as you know, interactions and you know, with Israel in the past, but the, it's been a trading nation in the past. And so, yeah, Shem, Shem and Ham, you could say, have been dealt with, like the descendants of Shem and Ham have been dealt with in a fairly significant way by the time Jesus comes back. Um, whereas the Asian the Asian peoples, not so much. So I have a feeling, I have a theory that perhaps Gog and Magog, it's the Asian peoples. The Isles have been waiting for the law and they get their chance to be tested, you might say. Yeah, far off in the Isles, dwelling carelessly. carelessly. Yeah, okay. So that's basically what I wanted to talk about. So Ezekiel 38 I'm pretty sure it, that that war doesn't happen until after the uh, after the thousand years. So and it's important it's important that that's, <laughs> to to understand that because of Revelation 13, you know, bringing the fire down from heaven. This beast is going to bring fire down from heaven. The beast that comes out of the earth and deceive the people by the means of the miracles which he had the power to do. So if there's a war or people gathered against Israel and then fire comes down from heaven, which could happen with whatever satellites or whatever, whatever they've been putting up in the in the sky, they, they could probably with technology bring down fire from heaven. So that wouldn't surprise me. So be careful about that. And yeah, so that's that's what I think the series of events is. So Jacob's trouble, after that happens at the end of the tribulation, Jesus Jesus returns, the angels gather uh, the remnant of Israel, bring them into the land. It's a resurrection, I think, of the past saints, and they live in Israel for a thousand years. The world is at peace. After the thousand years, Satan gets released, and he deceives people again. And then I think Gog and Magog, which is, I think, the Asian peoples, they play a significant role in that and coming against Israel, and then they recognize, they recognize God then. That's what I think is happening. And also the you know protecting Israel, God's showing Israel he's protecting them now. It's you know the people come against the only reason they've suffered in the past is because he was turning his face away from them, and the reason why he was turning his face away from them is because they were disobeying him. But he's going to redeem them, not because they were not because they were righteous, but for his own name. So that's basically the outline. So yeah, I hope it's been interesting. Plenty more things to say about other topics, but yeah, I just thought that was important. May Jesus bless you and keep you. Amen.